Empowerment Resources, Inc., a nonprofit organization, has empowered more than 1,500 youth and adults in Duval and surrounding counties. Through its programs, Journey into Womanhood, Girls Mentoring, Life Skills for Teens, and Parenting Education Coaching. To get involved with programs, volunteer, or donate, visit www.empowermentresourcesinc.org. Follow us on social media, facebook.com forward slash empowerment.resources and instagram.com forward slash empowermentjax. Now you can live in Texas and not have a good red meat blend. Texas Cowboy Dust is designed for steak and other red meats. It's out to be my most popular spice blend, made with onions, peppers, ground mushrooms, pink salt, and other spices. Texas Cowboy Dust also goes great with chicken, pork, vegetables, and has a restaurant quality sheen to gravies and sauces. <laughs> It's like a loot machine. All around town, trying to get down. Vanilla smoked sea salt seasoning is for seafood. The tarragon and fennel bring out the natural sweetness in seafood. I also use it in rice dishes, on yams, asparagus, blueberry pancakes, and believe it or not, chocolate chip cookies. Vanilla smoked sea salt adds a salty and savory component to sweet dishes that create a symphony for the tongue. Have you had your Earthblend coffee today? At Earthblend Coffee, we take pride in offering you the very best of beans across the world, blended and roasted to perfection, giving you superior quality and satisfying and flavorful taste. Experience the world in one cup with Earth Blend Coffee. It was a, a monumental game for a and and Tampa. It was a monumental game. Somebody had to lose, and thank God it was them this time. We knew it was going to be a battle. Look at Jake Avis' record. 202 and 36, I think, some, some un, off the wall figures. And nobody would play him because they didn't want to take a chance of getting beat. But the truth of it is, over 46,000 tickets. Blacks were sitting on in, in the East Stands. Whites were sitting in the West Stands. And the score wound up 34-28. Uh, the only thing we proved that uh, we wasn't inferior, that we were not inferior, and we were not afraid. For one night, for 160 minutes, we were better than them. The Cuvée Group is a Florida-based marketing and training consulting firm. We help businesses communicate to their target audience and engage them in conversation. We also help to expand their audiences, which will ultimately result in growth for those organizations. In addition to being a certified constant contact specialist, my colleagues and I are also certified in John Maxwell Leadership Principles. We use these proven principles to conduct workshops, training, and private coaching sessions for individuals and companies looking to take things to the next level. Contact us to schedule a free consultation. Issues today, don't delay, call Cuvée. Q Time is our classic Atlanta soul food restaurant located in the historic West End. Q Time Soul Food is a family business started by Fred and Christine Crenshaw. Come on in, relax, and sink your chops into our tantalizing, mouth-watering, distinctive soul food with a twist, the Q Time Way. 1120 Ralph David Abernathy Boulevard, or call your order in at 404-758-2881. Do you miss your mama's cooking? Then come on down to Q Time, an Urban Passport member. Shop Melvin Online Women's Boutique to spice up your closet with trendy, unique looks. We have fashionable and chic looks at very affordable prices. Melvin Boutique offers free shipping all year long on all orders. Shop online at www.melvetboutique.com. That's www.melvetboutique.com. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram. Shop Melvin Online Women's Boutique. Majesty is a premium health and wellness tea line focused on bringing delicious yet healthy tea blends to the community. Filled with an abundance of vitamins and antioxidants, we work to blend teas with exotic spices and fruits to produce scrumptious and wholesome beverages. So check us out at mymajesties.com. That's M-Y-M-A-J-E-S-T-E-A-S 
Passport.com. My Majesties, an Urban Passport member. This is Brian Fulford. A.D. Drew and I are co-hosts of the BCSN Sports Wrap. We talk about all things related to HBCU athletics. From the games, teams, coaches, and fan interest stories, we cover it all. You can find our shows on Facebook at BCSN Sports Wrap, YouTube at MyJBN Online, and everywhere you listen to podcasts like Anchor, Spotify, Google, and Apple Podcasts. You can also find the show on the Jericho Broadcast Network's app. Make sure to download. We look forward to you joining the conversation and being a part of the show. Sugar Chateau Desserts is a specialty bakery located in the Charlotte, North Carolina metro area. We will create delicious and one-of-a-kind treats for any occasion. Sugar Chateau is currently shipping cakes in a jar, offering a variety of different flavors in a single-serve container that can help you celebrate in accordance with social distancing. Place your orders today by calling 803-526-7895 or visiting SugarChateauDesserts.com. The human voice has always connected audiences with experiences. Major brands all across America have trusted Kevers Voice time and time again. Conversational, powerhouse, intelligent, and sincere. That's the voice you need for your creative marketing process. K-E-A-V-E-R-S-V-O-I-C-E.com. Kevers Voice, Kevers Voice, KeversVoice.com. Always on, all the time. Let's face it, shopping for insurance can be time consuming. That's why when it comes to your auto, home, and life insurance needs, make things simple and trust the experts at Allstate. They will help you get the coverage that fits your needs while helping you bundle your life, home, and auto policies. Bundling saves you money, sure, but it also saves you time, so you can enjoy the things that matter most even more. Contact me, Tammy Haynes, your local agent, for a free personalized insurance quote. Allstate, are you in good hands? I'm returning to Clinton, Paris, and Tampa's my community. I grew up here, went to school here, and my wife and I make our home here. What makes Tampa special are its people. So when I represent someone injured in my community, it's personal. Call my office and speak to a real lawyer and not some referral service. I will fight the insurance companies to get the settlement that you deserve. At the Law Office of Clinton Paris, we take the pain out of being heard. True Black Essentials is a retail opportunity to bring black businesses under one roof where every product on every shelf in every aisle will be black owned and black produced by people all over the world. Statistics show that the $1.3 trillion of spending power that we have as black people can easily be turned into each black person having $2 million if we were to shop black for two years. So True Black Essentials will launch an e-commerce store on November 1st, 2020, but we will open up brick and mortar stores in Atlanta, New Orleans, Charlotte, Houston, and Jacksonville with the very first store opening in Atlanta, June 19, 2021. I love my HBCU And boy, I love it, love it I love it, love it I love my HBCU And man, I hope my team they won one I hope my team they won one Yeah, man I hope my team they won one I hope my team they won one Yeah, I tune into the HBCU Sports Lab to see if my team won a loss. If they lost, I'm quiet as a mouth. But if they won, he tab. Uh, I'ma do the dab, yeah. Dr. Cavill, he know what he be talking about. Mike and Charles, they know what they be talking about. They compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they won a loss. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir, and pay attention. Boy. This is Dr. Bill with Inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. As you see, Mike Washington is still out on assignment. 
And even B.J. Jones, extraordinary HBC football analyst, is out taking care of business as well. So we asked Joe Clay of the 1876 Sports and Culture to show up and show out to give you some insights as we go down and tell you what took place on Saturday and give you a little update of what's taking place today with Tennessee State as they're hosting Murray State, a top 25 team. We'll let you know how that's going for those that haven't had the updates. But welcome to episode 116 of Inside the HBC Sports Live radio show and podcast, the show that's covering the sporting HBC diaspora, all things HBC sports from institutions large and small, from NAIA to the NCAA, we're sharing insights of information on the HBC sports culture, HBC athletic aesthetics, to facilitate the story of HBCU athletic programs and the business of HBCU sports. I'm your host, Dr. Kenyatta Cavill, along with my co-host, Mike Washington, Charles Bishop, for our Sunday weekend edition of Inside the HBC Sports Lab. Again, we have Joe Clay sitting in for us. How you doing, Joe? I'm doing well, wonderful, after a, a great Saturday of HBCU football. No doubt about it. Charles, how you doing? Um, we're making it today, Dr. Cavill, you know, we uh, back in the lab, trying to research everything, and uh, uh, it's a beautiful sunny day. I'd love to be out on the golf course. <laughs> yeah, I understand. I'm sorry we're cheating you out of a little bit of some of your golf time there, but uh, the people need you, and you know you're here oh, to no. get it. It won't. I'm your host, Dr. Kenyatta Cavill, again, with Mike Washington, Charles Bishop. Mike is out on assignment, so we have Joe Clay and Charles Bishop. With that, we're filming from our home studio and right here in terms of the beautiful home of Texas Southern University from Houston, Texas. Today's episode of Inside the HBC Sports Lab is sponsored by THG Agency, LLC. THG Agency is a company that provides sporting and educational consulting and data analytics. With that, let's just chop it up. Before we get into this uh, updates, obviously, any HBCU news that you wanted to share for today's show, Charles? Oh, well, you know what? We, we, we got all our, 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 our games from yesterday that we have to take a look at. Uh, should be an interesting deep dive. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's some, some, some fun stuff, some fun uh, analysis, if you will, from yesterday. Very exciting action yesterday. Looking forward to just jumping right into it. Yeah. Uh, we can close out on the chapter of basketball on the men's side. Uh, those teams that got the – First round win, or first four, as they like to say it, closed out. Uh, Texas Southern played pretty well against uh, Michigan, uh, but ended up going down to double digits, and Gonzaga took it to Norfolk State. Um, they played pretty well, all things considered, and obviously Thursday we told you about still coming out of the NIA Sweet 16 as they didn't get it made. Women are up to bat today. Jackson State with a tough charge in terms of Baylor. Number Got one. Got now. So uh, give us an update. Any early update scores there? Oh, uh, the Baylor, well, the game just tipped off. Baylor just got the opening uh, uh, open points there, a little turnover there by Jackson State, and Baylor comes back down on a quick fast break. So it's quickly 4 nothing Baylor on top of Jackson State. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a tough one there. And then, obviously, you have a and as a number two seed uh, taking on the 15th seed there. But we're going to get into more of the football action. And now it's squarely that time um, this – Tuesday, we'll give you some updates of what took place of the full series of baseball games. But let's get into the mix. Let's just jump in there and what everybody wants to talk about, obviously, is that big matchup. Jackson State was coming in, top 25 team, 3-0 in conference race, taking on the Alabama State team that uh, had a couple of weeks off, uh, had that early tough loss to Southern, and we'll talk about that Southern-Texas Southern game a little after this. But – Big matchup in Montgomery. Everybody came up, came out, showed out. Dion was in prime time. But it was all about Alabama State and those Hornets winning 35-28 to 28 classic matchup back and forth. Um, but let's get into some particulars of what you saw in that game. I'm going to start with Joe Clay, our guest, to be nice, and then we'll come uh, to you uh, to bat it up and see what your thoughts is and make you – Sim on this even a little more, Jaws Bishop, but I know you've had time. <laughs> Wait. And to, to your credit, you said on Thursday coming into this matchup, there were some things that concerned you about this game that particularly Jackson State didn't necessarily do well. So people sometimes will confuse the fact that obviously you're a proud Jackson State alum as well as Texas Southern University for that matter. 
in terms of your graduate study. But when we hear, it's about a professional framework of how we deliver the information. Sure. So let me go back to you, Joe. What did you see in this matchup? We had a chance to text a little bit back and forth, and uh, you were giving some analysis to the game. Now you get to share it with the people. What are your initial thoughts on it? Well, well first of all, I, I was already uh, – I, I was uh, kind of pushing back to the, the fans of Jackson State to just be leery that – don't get overconfident with the first two games that you played. You played two games and you and you destroyed two teams that you were supposed to beat. So I, I hope Jackson State fans weren't too overconfident. So then you came in this week against the Alabama oh, State game. Oh, Jackson State fan doesn't. <laughs> Was that a uh, oh, overconfident? That's what is that just how it goes? Yeah, that's just uh, how. I mean, it, it is what it is. So. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Jackson State fans are likened to Dallas Cowboy fans, so ah. you, you'll never ever have to worry about uh, uh, Jackson State fans and the confidence part. That's just never part like of a the confidence. Game. So, <laughs> so those those first two games just exacerbated that situation. Then, so you came you came into a, a game against Alabama State. I think they did an excellent job. Obviously, uh, you have to give your hats off, take your hats off to the coaching staff because they obviously got that team ready to play. Over, over during the, the, the COVID uh, protocols uh, situation, their defense stepped up, uh, showed that they have some ballers on their on that squad on the defensive side of the ball. Um, even though Jackson State scored twenty eight points, I thought that was that was a, a nice outing by uh, Alabama State's defense, and obviously offensively to put thirty five points up against a Jackson State defense that had. That had up to this point shown that they have some players on that side of the ball as well. I know they got some other guys coming in, but they have some ballers on that squad right now. So to be able to put up 35 points on a Jackson State team that came up with all that energy, all that fire, all that hype, I, I don't think you could have asked for anything more from Alabama State. No doubt about it. Let me shout out to LaShawn Harris, Brent Brunson, Dexter Hill. Jimmy L. Wilson, he's all still talking about how he got his first four right. Man, man he's in still in basketball mode. I guess it is tournament time. Brent Brunson, as we said. Anthony Weston, what's up, everyone? Doing it on a Sunday. Yes, we got you. Lawrence D. White, Chris LeBlanc, Stephen A. Miller, Miller's talking about IE. We got us a special show. Yes, check us out. Sundays, and we'll give it to you. Demetrius Minor Gatewood, that's a student, former student of mine doing great things out there finishing up his master's degree at LSU, bring it. Just give him a couple of more shouts out for some other people out there. Talking about the fire, they all in it. Jay State, both teams played well. Man, that running back from uh, Bama State, yeah, he gave it to you. He was all over the place for so many days. Uh, Gray, as they call him, we knew about him. We told you to watch out for Gray. He, he's the real deal. Charles, what are your thoughts in terms of just your opening salvo in terms of this matchup? Oh, first and foremost, uh, hats off to Alabama State. Uh, they they were the better team yesterday. They played a tremendous game yesterday. Uh, this is a team, uh, and I, I think I touched on it uh, when we last talked to Dr. Gill Thursday. They're a talented team. They have uh, five uh, preseason all swag selections. Uh, you take a look especially at their defensive line, their front seven. Uh, Christian Clark, 6'1", 363. Uh, you got a Maryland transfer, Brandon Gaddy. Uh, you pair them also with uh, Andrew Ogletree. He's 6'4", 280. And then they have a thumper linebacker, Colton Adams. They call him Bubba, uh, 6'2", 220. Um, they really flew around yesterday. And they made Jackson State very one-dimensional in the first half. Uh, they did a tremendous job, I thought, of shutting down something that I think Jackson State does very well, and that's run the football uh, with Tyson Alexander. Uh, so, I think that contributed to a lot of things that Jackson State just was not able to run the ball until we get to the second half. And that's where I thought that you had some very good uh, cat and mouse games in terms of the, uh, the uh, strategy going forward. Jackson State uh, kind of took the wraps off Jalen Jones. I think some of the question going into the game was, was Jalen Jones healthy? Uh, he had got nicked up a little bit in the Valley game. Uh, so we didn't really get, get an opportunity to see his athleticism in the first half, but that totally changed, I believe, in the second half. Jackson State only had 20 yards of rushing uh, in the first half, uh, but Jalen Jones finished with 145 yards rushing. They really took the wraps off of him. But, you know, when you take a look at it, uh, Jackson State's offense is not geared 
to the foot uh, to the quarterback throwing 50 times, and, and that's what happened yesterday. Uh, Jalen Jones was 19 of 50 uh, with two interceptions, 180 yards. So that's the prescription I, I think uh, that the rest of the conference is going to take note of, take the run away, and you kind of uh, you, you hurt Jackson State tremendously from an offensive standpoint. I can't say enough about what Ezra Gray did to uh, Jackson State defensively. I think Coach Prime talked about it in his post game press. Uh, they got to finish. I mean, he really gashed them in the fourth quarter. And you thought when Jackson State kind of grabbed control of the game in the third quarter, uh, going into that game, all the talk had been about uh, third quarter woes. Jackson State had been outscored 76 in the third quarter. But uh, they, they made the plays that they needed to make, and they grabbed the momentum and credit to Alabama State for snatching that momentum back. Uh, we start the fourth quarter, and they have a 10-play, 95-yard drive uh, that tied the score. Can't say enough about that. There was a kickoff return. Uh, whether his foot was in or out, you know, that that's uh, debatable. I'm sure a lot of people will debate it, but the call the call was made that he was out of bounds. And uh, Alabama State, to their credit, they made the, the stop. They made the three and out. They snatched that momentum back in the fourth quarter. So uh, hats off to Travis Pearson, uh, Alabama State's defense coordinator. Uh, Alabama State did things they needed to do yesterday, and they got the win. Now, you jump in there and you talk about a lot of other teams looking at the recipe of what Alabama State was able to do to Jackson State to make them one-dimensional. In terms of the teams uh, on Jackson State's rest of the schedule, what other teams do you think have the ability um, in terms of players to actually do similar things that what Alabama State did? This oh, well, it's an uphill climb the rest of the season for Jackson State. I, I think uh, quality teams are in front of them when you have – uh, Southern, you have Prairie View and Alabama AM. Uh, everybody's going to borrow from the blueprint and see how Jalen Jones reacts. So, uh, especially when you take a look at a defense like Prairie View with all those uh, starters on the defensive side of the ball, uh, four all slack selectors over there on that defensive side of the ball as well. So, uh, they're going to be especially tough. Southern, you saw what they were able to do last night against Texas Southern. So, uh, it's it, the, the meat of the schedule is coming up for Jackson State, and we'll see how they respond. Certainly, and I'll go back to you and let you have a closing uh, thought on this, Joe Clay. But before I do that, um, the game was close. First downs, 24 to 21. Total yards, Jackson State 350 yards. Alabama State put up 466 yards. Uh, to your point in terms of the rushing, Alabama State was able to put 209 yards rushing. Jackson State, although it may not look like it from a running back position, total yards, they were able to put 170 yards. But as you talked about in terms of passing, they were only able to put up 180 yards passing, 257 for Alabama State. So much more balance in regards to what they were able to do when you look at that. Time of possession was pretty even, 29, uh, just under 30 minutes, basically, for both teams, essentially, uh, when you have it. Turnovers was similar, two turnovers, Jack State three uh, for Alabama State in terms of what looks at there. But that freshman quarterback, um, he's really playing well. Ryan Nettles, yeah. What are your thoughts in terms of Ryan Nettles? Let me start with you, Joe Clay. Any accolades that you want to talk about Ryan Nettles? Again, coming in as a freshman, 6'4", 190 pounds out of Evergreen, Alabama. Hurt himself in high school, uh, so may have not got all the looks that he could have got, but certainly sounds like Alabama State and the fans are pleased about what uh, went on over there. What are your thoughts uh, after watching Ryan Nettles for the second time this season? Well, obviously, Alabama State got themselves a jewel. Uh, an unfortunate incident with the injury allowed him to probably uh, go somewhere where he may not have gone without that injury. And it probably worked out for the best for both he and Alabama State. He threw for 257 yards as a freshman. Uh, that is outstanding. Uh, again, against a, a defense that had shown itself uh, pretty good pretty well so if you're giving up if you're Jackson State I'm concerned I'm giving up 257 yards to a freshman quarterback that's a problem you give up 195 yards to one running back uh Ezra who, Gray Ezra Gray let's who, say it again yeah I mean who closed it out with the less oh, a, a little bit over a minute <laughs> left in the game how do you give up that long run that was that man if you're a J State fan that was painful to watch that run so. Well, you, you know, I, and I think uh, Coach Brown talked on it in, in the postgame press, so there's been a whole lot of debate, you know, and he mentioned, uh, you know, 
one of the things that if 10 people are doing the right thing and one person is out of place, that that's how those breakdowns happen. Uh, talked to a few of, you know, former players last night, you know, I don't want to hear all that, but you know, <laughs> yeah. there's, uh, I think there's some truth in, you know, there was some, some, some uh, adjustment breakdowns that did not happen yesterday. And that's something Jackson State is going to have to pay uh, attention to going forward. Uh, and I sent word over to uh, Alabama State's uh, uh, quarterbacks coach, Richard Moncrief, uh, yesterday. He, he has one in Ryan Nevels. Uh, yeah. Tremendous game yesterday. Uh, and the big thing, uh, and I think they touched on it in the broadcast, uh, that, that, that starting offensive line, all redshirt freshmen and, red, and one redshirt sophomore, uh, you know, in front of a redshirt freshman quarterback. So, you know, Jackson State, Coach Prime, and they talk about you better get to – uh, Jackson State now before the reinforcements get there in the fall. I would say the same thing about Alabama State. You know, they, they got some ball players over there too. So, uh, Al- I, I, and I say this, the, the SWAC East has gotten real fun because when Alcorn gets back in the mix, uh, Alabama State, Alabama a and Jackson State, it's going to be a real dogfight over there. So, SWAC West, you know, I think these things are cyclical. You, you've had your fun now for about a good seven, eight years, and uh, that SWAC East might be on, on, on the come up. It's a beautiful yeah, thing. Like you said, we're getting all corn on the West, but everybody else playing in the East uh, 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 adding to it. Like you said, Jackson State is standing up. Alabama State is what we see. Alabama a and obviously – uh, is playing with house money. And then you add the two expansion teams with Bam Bam and Bethune Cookman and everybody that has watched the greater perspective of HBCU understands that those are serious, formidable teams. And we're not even talking about the talent in general in Florida, which you know comes with that. It starts to spread out even more throughout the SWAT now, which is interesting because now you have the combination of having you know, Florida and Texas in the same conference. It should be fun. We're talking about another freshman quarterback. Jalen Brown got a chance as a freshman out of Austin, Texas, 6'2", 220 pounds to start for uh, Texas Southern University because uh, the first two uh, quarterbacks for Texas Southern University got hurt in that Prairie View game. I want to ask this before we get into this matchup. Um, What are your thoughts of playing a rivalry game to kick off the season? Obviously, you were supposed to play Grambling in – um, Prairie View in that matchup that was held off because of the freeze and obviously in this situation everybody is playing everybody so the spring ball is what it is but I'm talking more in general you've seen this happen over and over for Texas Southern in terms of uh, quarterback getting injured you get injuries anyway in football but just what are your thoughts about playing a robbery game to kick off things we see that now going to start in the East Division with Pam U and Jackson State there's a lot of excitement because it happens, but in terms of on the other side, let me go to you, Joe Clay, before we get in your analysis of freshmen. What is just your overall thought about playing a rival game early in the season? I love it. You, you got to kick the season off hot. You got to be ready. You may have implications that affect you for the season, so you better, you better come with, with your A game. No excuses. Both teams are in the same situation. So the coach, it's, it's, it's incumbent upon the coaching staff to make sure that every snap they take during a summer preparation is, is, is worth it, is, is uh, efficient. And, hey, it is what it is, man. You just got to lace them up and be prepared to sh- be on your A game for that first game of the season. I'm sure there are a lot of coaches who really don't care to have that rivalry game, but <laughs> PV and TSU have been doing it forever with the Labor Day Classic. So – it, it is what it is, man. I, I think there should be more of it throughout college sports. Uh, instead of having those those gimme games, those, you know, zero, zero week games where you're playing a patsy or you're playing a game that really doesn't mean anything, have, that doesn't have any weight. Let's play. Let's play a game. Start to get the season off with a game that means something. I'm with it. Great point. Charles, what are your thoughts? I mean, if I'm if I'm a fan, I love it. I mean, but you know, <laughs> uh, you get to hear from the coaches too. Like they can't stand it. They need that. Uh, <laughs> they they want to get that quote unquote you know uh, practice game in so they can work out the kinks so we can you know so uh, alumni can really evaluate them in, in game two or three. Uh, but <laughs> but uh, you know, as a fan, you you love to see these huge matchups. 
Uh, you, you, you know, Jackson State FAMU, that, that's going to be huge, uh, that Labor Day weekend. But, you know, uh, the, the fan of me loves it, but, the you know, the alumni in me is like, mm, I wish we had one game in front of that one before, you know, we, <laughs> we go into that one. But, you know, I, I understand the excitement of it all. You know, Joe, you mentioned uh, Prairie View and Texas Southern. They've been doing it for a while now. And it's just something I'm not used to, you know, as, as, as a Jackson State fan. You almost, you know, you need that game before Tennessee State, you know, that, that sort of thing. So that's an interesting perspective how, they, you know, uh, Prairie View and, Ten- and, and Texas Southern jump right into it. I yeah, think you should spread made- it out, though. Great I think you should made- spread that out. You You shouldn't have one team doing it all the time if we're gonna if we're gonna make that an element Mm. within the swag to bring interest and attention i think you should uh should not have just one or two teams starting this season off with the guard robbery game you should mix that throughout the 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 entire swag teams i like that that if you're going to use it for the marketing components that you're talking about where fans get excited everybody should be exposed to the fact that they may have to do the first thing and thinking about that, that's kind of how ACC started marking this program. At first, it was just a program of Florida State doing the Thursday games. And then when they joined the conference, one of the things ACC was doing to try to rebrand what they were doing, they kicked off the season with a conference matchup. And a couple of first years, it was Miami, Florida State. And then they started rotating different teams to do it. So great points. And now you got the television package from uh, SEC with ESPN and the Big uh, Ten. They also find a way to look at a conference game or two. They kick off the season. But then, in addition, they started copying the HBCU models with these classic games. So now you have these intra-conference uh, matchups um, or inter-regional conferences where they have these big games, uh, which is something to point out as you talk about. But getting back into this, uh, as we talked about the quarterback, Jalen uh, Brown for Texas Southern. Southern destroyed Texas Southern, frankly, 51-23. It was close for a half, and that second half adjustments, you talking about Alabama State being able to pound uh, Jackson State with the run. Southern so- certainly did it. Uh, Skelton had over 245 yards, combined yards, 174 passing with two touchdowns. Did have the in- interception uh, early in the game, but ran for 71 yards. Uh, Southern rushed total 258 yards combined on 45 carries. Just amazing. But what are your thoughts before we get into a little bit more of the matchup? What are your thoughts, um, Joe, in terms of the freshman quarterback for Texas Southern University, Jalen Brown? I think he showed promise. Anytime you throw a freshman quarterback into the fire like that, you're going to get some good, some some bad. You know, you're going to get a lot of bad, and you hope you get some good to evaluate them. Uh, Coach McKinley is building talent there. It's going to be a building process. Um, that quarterback shows you some of the talent he's bringing in. I think he obviously needs some more pieces around him, but he's got something to build off of. Um, I, I'm curious to see if he gets the bulk of the snaps for the rest of the season. I know they've got some injury issues at the QB spot, so that'll be curious to see if he chooses to go to the uh, more seasoned uh, QB, if he becomes healthy and available, or if he chooses to stick with the freshman quarterback. But, man, if I'm him, I'm looking for the future, you know, the SWAC mm. is about to be hot on fire and highly competitive. So I, I want to get, you know, you're not going to do much. Uh, you're not going to be very competitive for this season. So you might as well give all the reps to the young guys to get uh, them ready to go for the fall. That's, that's a good take and an interesting take. I want to see what uh, Charles thinks of that. 21 and 37, 281 yards, a touchdown. Beautiful touchdown before half, 50 plus yards. Had an interception. Uh, that you could read, you could see it coming when he threw it. And he's like, oh, no, freshman, don't do that. Uh, one of those matchups. But uh, same thing with the Alabama State quarterback. But he was able to come back and um, obviously hold his own. But what are your thinks of the, uh, your thoughts on Jalen Brown for Texas Southern University? Well, I tell you what, he has a rocket for an arm. Uh, that's for sure. He was able to uh, show that off last night. He has a very lively arm. Uh, it's like one of my old coaches said, he has one of those 90 mile an hour uh, uh, right arm. So uh, very impressive, 21 of, of 37, 281 yards, like you mentioned. But, uh, you know, at times watching that game last night, uh, you just, you know, Texas Southern's down to the third string quarterback. You, to me, it's almost, uh, is there any more snake bitten program in the sweat? 
because every time they, they kind of get some things rolling a little bit. And I was really looking forward to seeing how they would look post Prairie View. That was a great game, great opening weekend starting off against Prairie View. And, uh, you know, it's the, the, the penalties. Uh, when they get big runs, it's always something that sets them back. So it's almost as though whenever they take two steps forward, they take three steps back. So I can understand as a, a Texas Southern fan how frustrating it is sort of watching uh, their games. And then, you know, it, it just kind of got out of hand. But this was a prototypical Southern sort of win. It was a prototypical Ladaria Skelton. Uh, you know, I, I think a, a lot of us were looking to see if uh, John Lampley was actually going to get to start last night. But uh, this was classic Skelton, you know, uh, throw for over 150, run for, you know, close to 150. And that's, you know, that they're at their best when he has that play action going and he can, you know, find those crossing patterns, find those tight ends down the scene, you know, that's when Southern gets pretty difficult to stop when, when Skelton is able to uh, do his read option magic and, and, and really, you know, put, put defenses on their heels with his running ability. So uh, very, very uh, workmanlike effort last night for Southern. Yeah, they do what they do. Southern, just Southern's what it does, especially under Coach Odom. Um, that bounce back after two weeks, you do not want to be the team after uh, Southern has lost and has two two weeks to prepare for their next opponent. It just doesn't end up right. This is Dr. Bills inside the HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Mike Washington is out on assignment, along with our HBCU Sports Analyst, B.J. Jones, but sitting in the hot seat. Uh, for our Sunday edition, special edition, weekend edition, is Joe Clay from 1876 Sports and Culture Podcast. You can catch his show every Tuesday as it's released as a podcast. Look for them to start streaming in the near future, and we'll get you more information on that before the end of the show. But stay with us. This is Dr. Bill inside HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. It's never too early to plant the seed, to share the tradition, and instill a sense of pride in your HBCU with your little ones. HBCU Pride and Joy Children's Boutique helps you share your school spirit with a wide selection of adorable kids' apparel and accessories officially licensed from your favorite HBCU. Visit HBCUPrideJoy.com and follow us on all social media at HBCU Pride Joy on Facebook and Twitter. Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor. Yeah. This is Dr. Bill inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Mike Washington is out on assignment. BJ Jones is out on assignment. So we brought in uh, the heavy hitter, Joe Clay, 1876 Sports and Culture Podcast. Charles, do you have an update? Uh, sure. Right now, update from San Antonio, Jackson State down to Baylor 29 to 10. That's still with uh, 843 here in the first half, second quarter, I should say. That's all right. Come on, Jackson State. Keep fighting. Keep fighting. It's a tough one there. That's a tough one. We understand you're playing one of those branded, pro branded programs with Baylor right now that gets all the talent, it seems like. It's a tough hole to go. But with that being said, BC, BSCN uh, has – a streaming matchup that they have partnered with BCSG 360 with a couple of matchups that you won't want to miss if you're into the uh, baseball, HBCU baseball, Black College Nines as well as give you a lot of information. But in terms of these games, check it out. Coming up, you have Savannah State takes on Edward Waters. That's in Jacksonville, Florida. And then you have the matchup in Dallas, which uh, features four teams out of the SWAC 
moving their conference games up that way, uh, playing some great baseball. You have Prairie View, Grambling, Southern, and Arkansas Palm left involved in those matchups as they are just outside of Dallas getting it done um, in the minor league ballpark. So go check out some great college baseball action, HBC specifically. You can go check out uh, BCSN to get some of the particulars. Uh, but as we do that, we were talking about finalizing some of the things that were going on with that Southern and Texas Southern matchup. Southern comes out with the win 51 and 23. They bounced out. They improved the two and one uh, in on the season while Texas Southern falls to 0 and 2 on the season. With that matchup, first down, 24 to 22, but wasn't quite indicative of the total yards in the game when Southern put up 460 yards. Texas Southern put up 383 yards. Passing, 202 yards for Southern, 281 for Texas Southern. Rushing is where you're seeing a huge, significant difference. Rushing was 258 yards, as I said, for Southern, just 102 yards for Texas Southern. It's hard when you're one-dimensional and the team knows what you're doing uh, in terms of getting it done. And then you had, obviously, the two costly turnovers for Texas Southern. You had a chance just before half where you thought maybe there might be a little momentum where you had a first down where it looks like Texas Southern was going to put it back to a two-point difference at halftime if they were able to sneak it in the end zone before that. Penalty, just the type of, like you say, a snake bitten in so many different ways. If it isn't injuries, it's penalties that are costly. You saw that in the t tough loss to Prairie View in some ways in parts of the game. But uh, that penalty took away that first down. Wasn't very obvious, but obviously referees call what they see. And it caused Texas Southern, they weren't able to rebound. And ultimately, Southern scored before the end and took a touchdown lead into the half, um, getting it done in so many different ways. With that, anything else you see from Southern, Joe Clay, in terms of what you think, how they have rebounded, what they're coming up? Obviously, they had that tough loss to Pine Bluff, which we'll talk a little bit about Pine Bluff and Grambling, which is surprising everybody, at least in my mind. Uh, that Southern lost to, but what are your thoughts in terms of Southern? They have the bulk of their schedule to come lately. As you said, they still play Prairie View. They got Jackson State they're going to play, so it's going to be interesting to see where they are, and they still got the Grambling team that is struggling right now. What do you think in terms of Southern moving forward? I think they did an excellent job on bouncing back from that loss last week. You knew they were going to show up. They were <laughs> not going to lay an egg. Coach Odoms is an excellent coach, probably one of the best in the SWAC. So uh, I ex fully expected to see what we saw last week. I mean, uh, yesterday, um, their running game is strong. I know a lot of that is led by their quarterback, but I like their running game. The passing game does what it needs to do. They may run into some problems when they, they come up against a stouter defense, such as a, a Prairie View defense that has a very good front seven. So I look forward to that game. I look forward to seeing uh, Southern's running game against Prairie View's uh, defensive line. Uh, but I, I, I believe Southern is doing – they look very f similar to how they've looked the last couple of years. Uh, an adequate passing game, a good running game, and a defense that may give up some points, but they're going to stand up when they need to. So I'd be – I'm going to be – very excited to see a time when Southern gets a prolific quarterback back in their, in their offense. What is that going to look like? Because they haven't really had one for a while. So uh, curious to see that. It's a little scary to think about because they find a way to win regardless. So, mm -hmm. uh, Yeah, that's a great point. I don't know how everybody wants to see that, but point well taken. <laughs> <laughs> but – with that said, Ladarius Skelton, before we move on to our final matchup, Ladarius Skelton, heckle, jekyll, he's up, down, but when he does it, he does it pretty well. What are your thoughts in terms of either Southern or in terms specifically with the quarterback senior, 6'2", 210-pound Pine Bluff, Arkansas, as you know, Ladarius Skelton in his back bounce, back bounce back game himself? Well, I mean, I always the, the, the question like like we asked uh, Thursday, which which Ladarius Skelton do we get? Uh, do we get the dynamic Ladarius Skelton, or do we get 
uh, the, the skeleton that can be inaccurate, uh, sometimes passing. And I, I thought uh, when Dawson Odom said that they were going to get back to basics, I thought this was the sort of game that we were going to see where they just kind of bludgeon you on the ground. And uh, again, they, they made use of, of Skelton's athleticism. Uh, you know, I think we're, we're at a point now where we know that uh, his athleticism is what's going to uh, take Southern far. Uh, he is not a traditional drop back passer, you know, that's, that sits up and reads defenses and, and things of that nature. He is a, a dynamic read option quarterback, and he puts a lot of pressure on defenses with, with his legs. So I, I think they did just enough. I mean, I, I think those are the stat lines that I'm kind of uh, – I, I know with, with Skelton when he's, you know, somewhere under 20 attempts or so, but he's, but he's rushed for uh, over 100 yards, but, you know, uh, but he's under 20 attempts pass. And I, I know that's right where – Southern needs to be offensive. And then defensively, they get after you. And they, that's what they did last night uh, in terms of getting a couple of sacks there on Texas Southern's quarterback. Another timely turnover. You know, they had another pick six. Uh, they do it always on special teams. They had a kickoff return last night. Just a very uh, fundamentally solid team when they're playing well. So it'll be interesting with Southern going uh, down the stretch. That, that loss to UAPB looms large, though. Yeah, that's going to be very interesting. In this shortened season, all those games really matter in terms of uh, who you lose to, if it's not directly in terms of who you lost to or how it would affect somebody else. So it'll be fascinating. Let's move on to probably the biggest stunner to some people's eyes, if it's nothing other than the brand uh, really going to 0-3 on the season and then the way they took it on the chin. Arkansas Pine Bluff, 48, Grambling, 21. And this was in Grambling where they don't lose much, but they've already lost two times. That's one program that is not going to want to play any games in the spring. <laughs> Moving forward, it's just not working out for them. But before we get into this matchup, let me give you an update and uh, give you some insight in terms of that Tennessee State hosting Murray State that comes into the game 3-0. and Obviously, Tennessee State got the big win last week off. Um, and that included a 62-yard field goal with the special teams player of the week for OBC getting it done. Well, he's kicked another field goal in this game. So they trail at halftime, 14 and 10. Uh, Tennessee State drove right down the field uh, for the first drive, got a tough penalty, took him out of uh, scoring a touchdown opportunity, they ended up having to go on a field goal, a bad snap, and they couldn't get a field goal off. Um, they stop him three and out for Murray State. Then they come back right down the field and drive again, score, uh, either pass, run. They go up 7-0, and then Murray State uh, uh, exposed on offense for two touchdowns. Tennessee State did close out on the half with a nice drive, but they had to sell for a fit, field goal. So, as you said, at halftime, uh, you have a score of 14-10 stats at the half. Um, Tennessee State, total yards 213 uh, to 173 for Murray State, 14-10 to 10 on the first down. Passing specifically, Tennessee State has 108 yards. 79 for Murray State. Rushing was 105 yards to 94. Um, penalties uh, hurting Tennessee State, seven for 65 yards. Murray State just had four for 45. Murray State does have the turnover uh, that has kept Tennessee State in the game, 14 to 10, if you would. So enough about that. Uh, I was able to watch some of that game before we got in here. So really want to get into – uh, this big game of the week for a lot of folks and see, get your insight in that when you talk about Skylar Perry, how he played 346 yards, four touchdowns, had an interception. He was 18 to 30. Um, then you have wide receivers playing well for Arkansas Pine Bluff, including Josh Wilkes, 6'3", 183, senior, Rock Hill, South Carolina. And those that would listen to him, we told you, they probably have arguably the best three wide receivers in the conference right now playing. And they're starting to show you why we thought that in terms of that matchup. Uh, in terms of that game, uh, Josh Wilkes put up 131 yards in the touchdown on just six receptions. Big play offense. Uh, defense is really where they're getting it done, though, in a lot of ways. They had a big pick six early in that game um, that really put Grambling State on the heels. Um, it was nip and tuck for the first half. It was just a 14-7 game at the half. Then they exploded for 28 points in the third quarter. They really put it away. Uh, Grambling scored late in the third as well as the fourth quarter to kind of make it somewhat more decent. Uh, but 48-21, they really got drunk. Um, so you talking about, as you like to say, Charles, uh, somebody on the ledge? Yeah. 
Yeah, I think my grandma fish fish. The ground and on the ledge. They're they're definitely on the ledge. I'm definitely on the ledge. And then you know our colleague Mo Carter, he showed me uh, grandma scheduled to to start off 2021. Yeah. <laughs> It doesn't get any easier the first four games. So it's like, gee whiz, I, I don't know what the prescription is for Grandma right now. Um, offensively, I, 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 they have no identity. They have no uh, uh, fluidness, if you will. Um, uh, yesterday, you know, we, we got a chance to see uh, Elijah Walker. Um, Grandma had 281 yards passing and 77 of it came from uh, the running back, Keel Nelton. So, you know, it's, I, that's, it has to be frustrating to watch uh, the quarterback play drop off in the way that it has with uh, both Higbottom and, 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 uh, and Elijah Walker. Uh, what I've been really surprised about, though, with Bramlin is uh, the fact that they just have not been able to run the ball whatsoever. Um, you take a look, Keelan Elder. Yes, uh, they only had uh, 87 uh, net yards rushing yesterday that's just not going to get it done especially with the sort of firepower that they have with Keelan Elder, C.J. Russell and Damian Brooks so that has, has been the surprising part uh, definitely the Grambling defense not being able to uh, get stops when they need to get stops but you know kudos to Doc Gamble yesterday uh, that opening Joe Frazier left hook was that onside kick to start the game that just you know put you in the mindset yeah okay. we here yeah by, uh, we here uh, you know, even though they, they didn't get, you know, points out of that, but it was just the statement like, um, you know, big deal. We're in the hole. Yeah. In that, you're in for a ball game. So, uh, you know, credit to UAPB yesterday. I mean, Skylar Perry, I mean, he's playing lights out ball. And we knew coming into the season uh, that I thought, you know, the weapons were going to be Dewan Miller and Harry Ballard. Harry Ballard had a big game yesterday. Dewan Miller only one catch yesterday, but it was Josh Wilkes who stepped up for Pine Bluff. And then you also have, you know, the, the speedster and the slot Tyron Ralph. So they got some explosive guys in that, in that passing game that puts a lot of pressure on secondaries. No doubt about it. When you talk about that rushing 87 yards, that was on 34 attempts, 2.6 yard uh, attempt. And obviously Pine Bluff didn't do much better. They only had 56 yards on 36 attempts, 1.6. But they could throw the ball. They didn't really have to rush the ball. And – they still control the line of scrimmage in terms of them being able to pass like they uh, would want to, and um, they just are getting it done uh, in terms of that matchup. Joe Clay, what did you see in that game? I, I, the thing that points out to me is Skylar Perry, 6'3", 215. This guy, he, he's from, for those, for those who don't know a lot about his background, he's from Edna Carr High School in New Orleans, Louisiana, a high school that won four back-to-back state championships he got at least one of those this guy's a winner he knows how to win um so in the swag when you've got a quarterback who's a truly a dual threat can throw it all over the field like he can and can run it he also he was the leading rusher with 38 yards rushing and he has the weapons to throw the ball to you got a chance against any team in the swag when you bring a talent in at the quarterback position like that uh so to me he's the leader of that team this year he, he he's putting it all together. Um, he cannot be stopped, in my opinion, with the weapons that he has. He's going to put up points against everybody. I don't care who it is in the SWAC. So SWAC, you better be ready. Every team in the SWAC that's on Pine Bluff schedule, you better be ready to stop that prolific offense that that uh, has awakened awakened this year. So to me, he's going to he is a potential player of the year. Uh, I see swag. you, Cameo Stokes. <laughs> so UAP uh, got some representation in here today. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they deserve it. We're gonna give them some yeah, love. Yeah, man. You got to check out, check out these big plays that you're talking about. You know, you Josh Wilkes, we gave you six for 131 yards, but look at some of the the big play capabilities that had. he had along for 60 yards. Ballard the third comes back, right? Mm -hmm. Harry, he gives you one for 58 yards. Mm -hmm. he, had, he goes seven for 124. Well, that's no big deal. He's like, all right, we'll, we'll find a way we can do some stuff, get those two players out there. Well, you had another one. Uh, Brown goes two for 59 and two touchdowns with a long of 31. Uh, not to be outdone, Ralph uh, comes in there with a long of 21. He does two for 28. Doesn't get the end zone, but he has a big play. And so they have weapons <laughs> that can yeah. give you chunk yards. And that mm. is a special advantage playing this game 
when you don't necessarily have to walk the ball down the field. Now, if you can do that, you're a special type offense. We've seen that a little bit about Alabama State, but they were able to put that explosive yards. Now, they did it in the run. Now, you yeah. see a team that does it in the air, and you have those combinations, boy. It gets interesting and dangerous. And as you said, what Scott Perry, he gave you a long rush of 23 yards. So just when you think you can cover everybody, he says, all right, I see an open lane. I'm going to sneak you for this one as well. <laughs> they ain't, ain't get the first down, the big needy first down, chunk yards to move us down the field. And if nothing else, that flips the field. So even when they don't score and they get these big yardage, they keep you on your heels because they force you. Now a defense that are playing so well, they make you travel the field because they always have you uh, with these chunk yards and just putting you on there. So you talk about what they were able to do on the defensive side. It's also impressive. I'm going to go back to you, uh, Joe Clay, and talk a little bit about what they – how they impress you, not only offense, but what it mm-hmm. surprised me is what they're able to do on the defensive side of the ball as well. Yep. If you hold, you tell me they, uh, if you told me that uh, Pine Bluff was going to hold Grambling to 21 points, I would not have believed you. Uh, I don't know if the credit is to go to Pine Bluff or if you give it to the lack of an offensive explosion from Grambling. We're not used to seeing this from Grambling. Um, so, I'm going to give it a little bit of in both columns. Pine Bluff's defense is playing well, and we're not seeing a typical Grambling offense. Um, mm. The reason I say it's a little bit more leaning to me, Pine Bluff, is what they were able to do for Southern, which we know is an explosive team. Now, they had the turnovers, and they scored late in the game, but they had Southern down to just two uh, touchdowns in the first half. So this is a team that is playing pretty solid defense, and as you said, as rich as some of the offense are in this conference, uh, I'm not sure if you're going to get any defense just to stop these high-powered offense. But to, to say that they've done this against Southern, I agree with you in terms of Grambling. We see that they're struggling on the offensive side of the ball. So um, point well taken there. Uh, anything you'd like to add to this, Charles, in regards to what you see Pine Bluff doing, not just on the offensive side of the ball, but the defensive side of the ball? Um, you know what? Shout out to all uh, Pine Bluff's offensive line. You know, they, they kind of have that that look of that old uh, Mississippi Valley tons of fun uh, offensive line. <laughs> they got some big ones up there. And, you know, Skylar Perry has, has an opportunity to sit back there and wing it all over the place. Uh, the more surprising thing is the number of explosion plays I think Grandma has given up. Uh, that's been surprising. Uh, they gave up a, a few of them against Jackson State where uh, Tyson Alexander was able to get off. They seemed as though they kind of corrected against Prairie View, but uh, those explosion plays showed up again. You touched on it, uh, Dr. Bill. Josh Wilt had a, a 60-yard play. Uh, Harry Ballard, 58-yard play. Jeremy Bound, a 31-yard play. So, you know, credit to UAPB for getting it done. And, you know, I, I tell you what, when, when, does, when, when does Prairie View and UAPB get together? I, I don't. It's like the last. Uh, well, it was going to be the last game, but obviously got the rematch on yep, the thirteenth. Huh? Yeah. So it's, okay. I think it's April thirteenth, and it's at Pine Bluff. Okay, I need ESPN to flex though. I, I need to see though. Hey, as yeah. a PV alum, I'm a little nervous. Hey, and let me tell you about this. Think about this. Three of the last four for Pine Bluff are at home. The oh, one wow. road game they have is against Valley. So ah. even the tougher competition they have, they have at home. So as long as they don't get too uh, full of themselves, the schedule really favors them in a lot of ways. Remember this also, while Prairie View's gotten off 2-0 and hot, this season has moved from the fall. So they're ineligible to play in the championship. Mm. So they even have their edge against Prairie View. So Prairie View is going to want to do it on the field because they won't be able to play for a – conference championship in the championship game they can only make their statement in terms of the regular season so that's going to be interesting with that uh, statement, i'm gonna say it now dr Cavill. uh in, in terms of what you said in terms of not getting them a little too full of themselves be careful with that that is a much better team than that 43 7 that you saw for those are a couple of late touchdowns from jackson state but they are very very solid I, i'll be honest with you i was I was very surprised with what Coach Vince Danzy has there with Valley, and they have a pretty decent quarterback. So I, I don't think you're just going to just club Valley. I, I know I've said it before, but that this time I, I'm serious about it. They, they, they really have a decent team. I, I'm going to do this for Mike since he's not here. Valley, 
<laughs> yeah, I know, right? All right. No, I, 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 you're I, being I, too I, kind. I, I understand what you're saying, and I agree with you. The only thing I'd say, I would, the reason I pointed out for Pine Bluff, the Pine Bluff and Valley is like they're round. Yeah, yeah. All right. And so that's a game that you, I don't see Pine Bluff slipping on in terms of them going on the road because it's their, their, it's their rivalry game per se. And so they're naturally going to get up for that one. It's the other games, one that I say that you might want to think about is the Prairie View matchup. But the last time Prairie View and Pine Bluff came together, Prairie View put all them points on them. So I don't think they're going to sleep on them either. So, yeah, they might get full of themselves and that. But I think when, when you get it done, I think the coach has that magic ball. The other thing that I heard they did in terms of this matchup is they talked about the Ghostbusters. As I was telling you about he, he had the Ghostbusters. The other thing that I really like that this coach does, he understands how to get his team up. They play uh, the videos from the last two years where Gramlin got those close wins and played the fight song that the band was playing, sending them home. They played it all practice all week long. <laughs> and so they had this team fired up. So I think this coach understands how to emotionally make sure he gets his teams up. So I just don't see him sleeping on anybody. I kind of threw that out there because that's the thing you got to say, but uh, your point is well taken in getting in that. As we start to close it up at the top here, I did want to sneak in. We'll get into this more on Thursday where we really get into the matchups. But these are the games coming up this Saturday. Obviously, you had the Sunday game with Prairie View at Jackson State that was going to be an ESPN2 game, so it has been uh, postponed. But you have the Grambling at Alabama A&M, 0-3, Alabama A&M 1-0. Alabama has not played in a couple of weeks, so they could be rusty. But I know they're going to want to make a statement. They want to uh, keep up with the race, especially after Alabama State won. Jackson State has got the conference loss. So it's going to be fascinating to see what that looks like. That will be on ESPN uh, to be determined in terms of the time of that game. And you have Alabama State and Pine Bluff. I think game of the week in a lot of ways. That's the one I say that you might see Pine Bluff to me if you call them slipping uh, because they coming off the big win. You're not playing the same stick and brand. What does the coach do to keep the focus at Alabama State, which we know now is a very talented team? It might help the fact that Pine Bluff sees that they just got that big victory over Jackson State, which could should catch anybody's mind. But that's the one that I think is going to be interesting. It's also on ESPN3 to be determined in terms of matchup. Quickly. Let me go to Joe. Any of those matchups, one that you have a more interest in the other? Uh, anything that you we should keep our eyes on with one of those matchups? Well, I'll say for the uh, the Pine Bluff uh, Prairie View matchup, it scares me because PV will have just come off a game against Southern. We mm. all know that P- PV has a problem with Southern. So they will either have gotten beat physically by Southern, or they will have, have had an emotional high against Southern to overcome uh, the, the, the mental hurdle that we've had. Either way, Prairie View is not going to be 100%, in my opinion, when they go to Pine Bluff. Uh, the Pine Bluff Prairie. game against uh, Alabama State. Yeah, hey, the Pine Bluff's defense may have a, 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 a down game, but I don't see that offense having a down game with that quarterback and those receivers they're going to put up points. That's They wake up in the morning and they just put up points. That's just what they do from a talent standpoint. So we'll see how that goes, but those, those are the two games that interest me. Hmm. Yeah, I want you to focus on Grambling, Alabama, a and and then you want to sneak something back in to Joe Clay on the Alabama State Pine Bluff. You can do that as well. Well, I, I mean, uh, Pine Bluff and, and, and Arkansas. You, you, no, uh, you just see, you made you to make Charles sit back. So you <laughs> yeah, Pine, Pine Bluff and Bama State. That, uh, Pine Bluff, they got the spotlight <laughs> this weekend. So you know uh, that, that that offense going against Bama State's defense. That front seven, I can attest to that front seven. There ain't no running going on with Big Christian <laughs> Clark there in the middle. So uh, that's gonna be a fun little matchup. So all right, all right, Pine Bluff, you got the spotlight this weekend. Let's see what happens. We'll see oh, if they I can take it. the spotlight. Oh, I love it. This is why we do our Sunday uh, version of this show. And watch us over the rest of the season. We'll sneak in some different type of guests, like you see Joe Clay. Uh, we'll try to get Tyler Carr in here from HBC Game Day. Uh, 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 Rob Galloway to get him in here. Uh, he was going to sneak in here and maybe give Charles the business a little bit. 
Uh, yeah, I know he was. Always gonna do it. Uh, he already got to you. <laughs> I bet you. Oh, he friend requested me and everything. I said, look at this. <laughs> yeah, it's tough. It's tough. I'll see you October 19th, Rob. What they say is tough in the sweat. I think they oh, have yeah. Oh, yeah. a page out there dedicated to it just to let you know. Uh, that'll do it. We're up to the top of the hour. Let's get out of here and make sure the folks can get their Sunday back. I want to thank all the followers that snuck in here and uh, gave us some love. A shout out to Bomb Love. Shout out to Alabama State. Big wins getting it done. Shout out to Southern. Bouncing back. With that, thank you for listening to Inside HTC Sports Lab. We'll make sure you share our podcast with your friends and colleagues. I am Dr. Kenyatta Cavill, the Dean of HBC Sports with Mike Washington, Charles Bishop. Um, on our Sunday edition, you see us with BJ Jones. Today we had Joe Clay sitting in the hot seat giving us some love from 1876 Sports and Podcast. Thank you for joining us. Again, we want to thank you for listening to Dr. Cavill's Inside HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington, Charles Bishop. Every Tuesday and Thursday at 6 o'clock. Check us out this Sunday. We'll flex it just to see what is best for the schedule. Make sure we can get much updates for all games in. As we know, Tennessee State is playing on Sunday. So we'll flex. Just stay with us. Keep us uh, on the dial on Sunday. And we'll see what we can get you the HBCU football news that you want. Follow me, Dr. Kenyatta Cavill, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. D-R-K-E-N-Y-A-T-T-A-C-A-V-I-L on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. We look forward to next week as we discuss the latest news in the lab. Dream big, continue to move forward. We will talk with you soon. Joe Clay? I'm out. Charles? Of course. Lecture? Dismissed. I love my HBCU, mm. and boy, I love it, love it, I love it, love it, I love my HBCU, and man, I hope my team they won one, I hope my team they won one, yeah, man, I hope my team they won one, I hope my team they won one, yeah, I tune into the Alabama Sports Network, yeah, man, I hope my team they won one, I hope my team they won one, yeah, man, I hope my team they won one, I hope my team they won one, yeah, man, I tune into the HBCU Sports Lab to see if my team won a lot, if they lost, I'm quiet as a mouth, but if they won, keep tab, I'ma do the dab, yeah. Dr. Cavill, yeah. he know what he be talking about. Talkin Mike about. and Charles, Talk. they know what they be talking about. Yeah. Talkin they about. compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they wanna lock, yeah. and who the ball.